Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. It's a good time to get into the Word of God, so get your Bible, and we're going to talk about the law of faith. Now, somebody said, well, what are you talking about a law of faith? Well, the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Now, you remember what the Apostle Paul said in Galatians, the first chapter. He said, the things I am teaching, I did not learn it, neither was I taught it by man, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. We're going to get into things that Paul taught concerning the law of faith, and I, I want us to begin in the, the Romans, the first chapter. I want to read, uh, start with the 16th verse where Paul says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Well, the just shall live by faith. Now, come with me over to the third chapter, and let's deal with a scripture that I know you've wondered, what does this mean? You know, you've thought, and some of you have read it and thought, well, yeah, that's it. There's none righteous, no, not one. Now, you see, if you're not careful when you're just reading bits here and there in the Scripture, you get it out of context. Now, I want you to listen to what the Apostle Paul states here in the third chapter in verse 10. And uh, you've heard people say this, well, you know, the Bible says, there's none righteous, no, not one. Now, I even heard of a certain church that would not allow a certain fellow's tapes to be played in their church, uh, is a music tape, you know, and a song, because he had a song entitled, we're the righteousness of God in Christ. And they thought it was blasphemy that we would say we're the righteousness of God. Well, <laughs> they, they just kind of showed their ignorance to, say, to tell the truth about it because listen to what Paul said here. You know, they said, well, the Bible says there's none righteous, so it's blasphemy to say we're the righteousness of God. Well, let's see what Paul really said here. Verse 10 of Romans, the third chapter, as it is written... Now, when he says, as it is written, he's talking about it's wrote down somewhere. You do know that, don't you? He's talking about in the Old Testament. He's quoting an Old Testament scripture. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that uh, understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. Well, if you just think a little bit, you'd know that's wrong. That was talking about under the Old Covenant in certain situations there under the Old Covenant. There is there's none, that they are all gone out of the way. They're all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Well, now that is in the Bible, isn't it? But you see, when people say, the Bible says, I say it this way, when you hear people that get that little whine in their voice, well, you know, the Bible says, you better get your helmet down because you're going to get hit with a bunch of unbelief because they're going to tell you something that the Bible had no more said than I'm an astronaut. It might be in the Bible, all right, but it's not what the Bible said. In other words, that's not the intent of what was said. So when you quote things out of context, you see, you lose the intent of it. And uh, to show you what intent is, is like one time uh, uh, the disciples were with Jesus and there was a voice came from heaven and said, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. And they thought it thundered. <laughs> they missed the whole intent of that thing. And uh, so the intent is important. In fact, the intent of the scripture is as important as the scripture itself. Even in the court of law, the intent of the law is as important and sometimes even more important than what the law says itself. So that's why we're talking about this. Now, come down to verse 19, and it'll undo this thing to where you can understand it or open it up where you can understand it. Paul says, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them that are under the law. See, he's quoting an Old Testament scripture. 
out of the law. And he says, uh, Now we know whatsoever the law saith, saith to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Now the law was given to prove to man that they couldn't keep the law and to show them that they were unrighteous and that they were, there was none righteous. You see what he's talking about here? Under the old law, you had to keep the law to the letter to become righteous. No man could keep the law to the letter except Jesus, and he fulfilled it. See, he said, I didn't come destroy the law, I came to fulfill it. He walked perfect and upright under it for 30 years, fulfilled it to the letter, and then it passed away. Now, see, the, the, we still keep the, the spirit of the law, but not the letter of the law. The letter of the law killeth, Paul says, but the spirit giveth life. So uh, if you love your neighbor, you won't kill him. If you love your neighbor, you won't steal from him, so on. Now, now notice what Paul is teaching here. He is teaching righteousness. He starts out by telling you what the old law says. And he said, there, uh, it's, it's not under the law. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. That's, that's the reason they knew they were in sin. See, before the law, they didn't know that they were unrighteous. But when the law came, they figured out, we're spiritually dead, man. I mean, you can't keep the law if, you, if you're spiritually dead. Spiritually dead people can't keep the law. Spiritually alive people don't need the law. So notice what Paul's teaching. He's teaching righteousness. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Now see, the law and the prophets teach the righteousness by faith. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now you've heard that quoted, and we beat the poor old sinner over the head with that until he bleed, beat his head bloody with it and said, you're just an old sinner, you know, and you're going to hell. Well, we all came out of the same boat, <laughs> like a fellow said one time. As they asked him, he said, uh, uh, what's your background? He said, sinner. Well, that's, that's what all our background is, sinner. Everyone from Adam on that is sinner. But you see, Jesus came to bring righteousness. He is the salvation of God. So under the old law, there was no righteousness under the law. Now, um, I, I think we ought to, to go to Galatians because uh, Paul in Galatians brings this out very vividly, and, and I want to read a little bit of it. Galatians, the third chapter. Uh, and in fact, the third chapter of Galatians said, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, uh, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, Galatians 3.13. But let's back up just a little bit. Verse 8, it says, For the Scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel to Abraham, saying, And these shall all the nations be blessed. So then they which are... Uh, of faith are blessed by faithful Abraham, for as many are as of the works of the law. Now listen to this. As many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Curse is everyone that can attendeth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. There is no righteousness under the law. That's why Paul said over here in Romans 3, uh, uh, quoting the Old Testament Scripture, there's none righteous, no, not one. Under the law there was none righteous, no, not one. But he goes on to say, verse 11, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, just shall live a faith. The law is not a faith, but the man that doeth those things shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us, for it is written, Curses everyone that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So he's saying that we receive it, the promise of the Spirit through faith. Christ redeemed us from the curse. In other words, the law was passed away. Now come on over here, we'll read just a little further here. It says, um, 
verse 22, but the Scriptures has included all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto faith should be afterwards revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster, bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Now see, some of you trying to do good works and get into heaven. You're on the wrong road. There's only one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. You can't go to heaven. You're not going to get into heaven by being a church member. Now, you may be a church member and go to heaven, but you must be born again, Jesus said. He told Nicodemus, you must be born again. You've got to be changed on the inside. Doing good works will not get you into heaven because man is, was spiritually dead because of sin. Jesus brought spiritual life. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we're no longer under the schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. As many of you have been baptized into Christ, you have put on Christ. And he goes on down to say, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female. You are all one in Jesus Christ. For if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. So the law was given to prove man that he was not righteous. So there was none righteous under the old law. But you see, in the very context that the Apostle Paul was teaching this and quoting an Old Testament scripture, he is teaching righteousness. The righteousness which is therefore by the deeds of the law. Well, verse 21. But now the righteousness of God is manifest. So you see, when people say, well, the Bible said there's none righteous. Well, it did say that in the Old Covenant, but it didn't say it for today because there are some righteousness, uh, some that are righteous. What do you do with 2 Corinthians 5, 21? For he hath made him to be sin for us who do no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You see, our righteousness is in him. His righteousness is imputed to us, not because of our righteousness, because the Bible says in the Old Testament, our righteousness is filthy rags in the sight of God. But I'm not depending on my righteousness. His righteousness has been imputed to me because I believe on the Son of God, Jesus Christ. So I am a child of God, and I am the righteousness of God in Christ, and you are too if you're born again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, that's good news, isn't it? It's good news to know that we're redeemed from the curse of the law. Now, we're talking about the law of faith. We're in Romans, the third chapter, where the apostle Paul is talking about there was none righteous under the law, but now the righteousness of God is manifest. Now, come over here to the 27th verse where Paul says, where is boasting then? It is excluded. In other words, we can't boast because we've been born again and made the righteousness of God in Christ. See, as long as you're in Christ, you are the righteousness of God. When you get outside of Christ, you're not the righteousness of God. Now, John put it the clearest of anyone, I guess, in the Scripture. He, he made it so plain, you'd have to have somebody to help you misunderstand it. He said, God has given us eternal life. Eternal life is in the person of Jesus Christ. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son hath not life. Now, that's just how simple it is. If you're in Christ, you have eternal life. If you're outside of Christ, you don't have eternal life. And uh, that's important. Verse 27, where is boasting then is excluded? By what law? Of works? Nay or no, but by the law of faith. Now, he calls faith a law here. And I want you to notice that. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So we're justified, <coughs> pardon me, not by the law, but by faith. Now, come down to verse 31, where Paul makes this statement. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid we establish the law. Now, he just got through saying uh, that where, where is boasting? He asked the question. Let's read it again. Where is boasting? It is excluded by what law works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Now, he calls faith the law. Then down here, he says, do we make void the law? Well, he says, God forbid, we establish the law. Now, what law is he talking about establishing? Certainly not the law of the old covenant. He's talking about the law of the new covenant. 
So we established, Paul said, we established the law of the new covenant, which is based on better promises, the Bible says. Now, when you, when you come into the fourth chapter, you find that you talk about Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. Now, here's where I want to take some time and talk to you about some things that you hear people say, and some of you said it. And it's one of the reasons that some of you are having trouble living a Christian life. You'll hear people say this, religious people say this, and I'm talking about good people. They may be born again, all right, and they're on their way to heaven, but they don't understand it. And I, and I want to share this with you because it's a revelation to me. And that is, you hear people say, well, we're just old sinners saved by grace. Well, now, wait a minute. If you're saved by grace, you're born again. The Bible says you have become the righteousness of God in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. In fact, verse 17 uh, of 2 Corinthians 5, here, here's sort of the way the Amplified uh, gives it. I, I may not quote it exactly, but it said, talks about uh, God is not counting up and holding against us our trespasses, but has canceled them. He said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And he says, God is not counting up and holding against us our trespasses, but has canceled them. And he has made us ambassadors of Christ to go and tell others that God's not mad at them. You know, he's not counting up and holding against them their trespasses, but he has canceled them. And he goes on in, in the, the last verse to say, verse 21, For God has made him, Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So we are the righteousness of God. The Bible says we are the righteousness of God in Christ. Now, you may not look righteous. You may not act righteous all the time. But you are the righteousness of God if you've been born again, so you ought to work at looking righteous and acting righteous, <laughs> and, and you have to mortify the deeds of your body. God sees you the way you'll be when he gets through with you. He's not through with you yet. And uh, God's image of you is that you're the righteousness of God. So we should not confess that we're old sinners saved by grace. Now, here's the reason for that. See, we were old sinners. But when we were saved by grace, we became the righteousness of God. Now, grace is God's willingness to use His power and His ability on your behalf, even though you don't deserve it. I saw a, a cartoon the other day where this fellow and his wife had evidently, you know, lay in heaven and in the clouds, you know, and they're talking to St. Peter. It's man's idea of the way heaven is. And, uh, and she said to him, uh, you know, St. Peter's standing there. He said, whatever you say, don't demand what, you, uh, what belongs to you. Don't, don't demand that you get what belongs to you. <laughs> In other words, you come to heaven, you don't want what belongs to you. You don't want what you deserve, in other words. You want what we get because of what Jesus did. He made us worthy. No, we're not worthy, but he made us worthy. See, it's his righteousness. Now, here's, here's the point I want you to see. When you got born again, you, you ceased being an old sinner. You became the righteousness of God. Your, your heart is changed on the inside. John said it this way, he that's, born, he that's born of God does not commit sin. Now, the Greek says it this way, does not uh, practice sin. So if you're not practicing sin, that means you don't make a habit, does not habitually sin. Now, why do you call a sinner a sinner? Because he sins, and that's what he does best. And besides that, he's locked into it, and he can't quit. How many of you tried to turn over a new leaf and just, you know, I'm just going to do better. I'm going to turn over a new leaf. You can't do it. You found out you couldn't do it. And some of you have been saying, well, now, when, when I get my life straightened out, I'm going to come to Jesus. Well, you're probably going to go to hell. Now, I'm just saying it plain because that's the truth. You can't straighten your life out, and if you're going to wait till you get it straightened out, you're probably going to hell because you're not ever going to receive Jesus if you continue on that path because it takes the power of God and the anointing of God for you to get your life straightened out. You can't turn over a new leaf. 
You remember Jesus said, an evil man out of the evil treasure is hardly bringing forth evil things. As long as you have evil things on the inside of you, you're going to act evil, and you're going to commit sin, and you're going to be a sinner. But once you get born again, you get changed on the inside. It changes the desires. When the love of God and the anointing of God uh, recreates the human spirit, that's what they mean by being born again. It, it changes you on the inside, changes your desires then you become what the Bible calls the righteousness of God in Christ. So, see the difference in a sinner, I want to show you the difference. Uh, a sinner is a, is a person locked in sin that has no way out. You just can't get out. You just can't decide, I'm going to quit sinning and quit. You just can't do it because you're a servant of sin. That's what the Bible said. Uh, it, you're a servant of sin. If you serve in sin, you're a servant of sin, and there's no righteousness in you. So uh, the evils in your heart keeps coming out. But when God changes you, I mean, he washes the slate clean. You're born again. I mean, God washes the handwriting from the note. I mean, he, uh, he nailed it to the cross. You're redeemed and delivered from sin, and you become born again. Then you're a child of God. Now, a sinner that sins is just doing what comes naturally. But when a Christian sins, he's made a mistake, but he has a way out. First John 1 John 1.9 says, If we, you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Now, that's written to Christians. That's not written to the sinner. It's written to Christians. Now, of course, if a sinner will repent, he can be saved, but John was writing to Christians. So a Christian that's born again, even though he does sin, it does not make him a sinner because he sinned one time or made a mistake. He's the righteousness of God in Christ. You break fellowship with God, but you repent. You have a way out. God, forgive me. I, I shouldn't have done that. I've sinned. Father, forgive me in the name of Jesus. It's just as though it never happened for us, God's concerned. But the sinner don't have any way out. He doesn't have a Savior. He doesn't know how to get out. He's locked in it. Now, let me show you. Why do you call a prisoner a prisoner? Because he's in prison and he can't get out. Now, you see, I, I was on death row one time. Yeah, but they let me out because I'm just visiting. <laughs> see, I just visited somebody on death row. They wouldn't let them out because they're a prisoner. They're locked in there. They have no way out. But you see, when you're born again, you have a way out. You may occasionally sin. John writing to the church, 1 John chapter 2 said, Beloved, I write unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, now talk about Christians, after you're born again, if any man sin, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. In other words, he's your lawyer. Jesus is your lawyer. And God is the judge. Now you think about it a minute. Jesus is our brother. <laughs> We're born again. He's our brother. Our brother's our lawyer and our father's a judge. Hey, man, we got it made if you'll just repent. Some of you have been drifting away from God, doing things, dabbling in sin. You better get back to God. Better get back and quit dabbling around in that. You have a way out. Confess your sins and, and get that under the blood. Get back in here because Jesus is coming. He's coming very soon. Now, you need to know that you have a way out. But see, a sinner has no way out because they're not born again. And a sinner that's going to wait till he gets his life straightened out before he comes to Jesus is more than likely going to miss heaven and split hell wide open because he can't do it on his own. And some of you watching this broadcast, you've tried it and you know you can't. You know what I'm talking about. You must be born again. Paul said, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you know that one scripture, believe in your heart, Jesus raised him from the dead, and repent of your sins and confess Jesus as Lord, you will be born again and you will be a child of God. And thank God the law of faith will work. That is the law of faith. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thy heart God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I mean, all the demons of hell can't stop you from being saved when you act on the Word of God. Hallelujah. Isn't that good news? I'm telling you it's good news. Hallelujah. Well, thank God for his Word. Now, before we leave the broadcast, let me remind you, 
that we have this two-tape series that's called Offer Number 2246. Now, on the broadcast, we're hitting some highlights of this, but this two-tape series deals with the law of faith uh, in depth. It's called The Law of Faith, two audio cassettes for $10, and it'll be a blessing to you. Uh, we're going to be talking some more about this, and, and, uh, but, but this will help you. You know, there's, there's things that people don't understand that when, when you get into this faith thing and believing God's Word, you're dealing with spiritual law, and it'll change your life. You know, the, uh, you know I've been a pilot for years, and uh, the thing about an airplane is that you're depending on a law that you don't understand and can't see to work to cause that airplane to fly like a bird. I mean, you can look out there on that wing and say, uh, you see any lift out there? No, I don't see anything out there. You can't see it because there's no lift there when that airplane's sitting on the ground. But you see, as you thrust that airplane through the air, the wing design on that airplane creates its own lift. And that's what happens when you are uh, confessing the Word of God the Lord said this to me one time. He said, uh, uh, confession of the Word of God is to your faith like thrust is to an airplane. In other words, when that airplane's sitting still, there, there is no lift on that wing. Now, we're depending on the law of lift to cause that thing to overcome the law of gravity and fly like a bird. Well, if you thrust it through the air fast enough, it will. Now, notice, you don't do away with the law of gravity when you fly an airplane. You supersede the law of gravity with the law of thrust and lift combined together. You overcome gravity, and that thing, even though it'll weigh a ton or two, or, or a big airline or several thousand tons, it will fly like a bird. Why? Because you're putting in motion a law. You really can't see it. Most people can't understand it, but they have faith in it. They'll get on that bird and fly. And that's what we talk about on this. We talk about how an airplane wing is designed to create lift. And when you're going down that runway, the bugs and the curses still hitting the windshield, you know. And that thing's still on the ground. But you don't pull the power back because you know it's eventually going to fly. <laughs> well, I'd like to preach it here, but it better not. That's offer number 2246, two audio cassettes for $10. We have a toll-free order line. 1-877-396-9400. That's 1-877-396-9400. Or you can write to me, Charles Capps, Box 69, England, Arkansas, zip code 72046. Ask for offer number 2246, and it's $10. It'll be a blessing to you. Until next time, this is Charles Capps reminding you that the devil is defeated, God is exalted, and Jesus is coming soon. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the 